Welcome friends, in this video let's discuss about eutrophication, what are the causes for this and what are the effects of eutrophication and how do you mitigate this phenomenon of eutrophication. First, the definition. Eutrophication is the ecosystem's response to the addition of artificial or natural substances, mainly phosphates and nitrates through detergents, fertilizers or sewage to an aquatic ecosystem. In simple terms, eutrophication is due to the addition of uh, nutrients like uh, phosphorus, phosphates and nitrates through various uh, uh, sources into the water body. Okay, and this result in an uh, undesirable phenomenon called harmful algal blooms where the algae are grown in an unsustainable proportion which triggers various undesirable consequences. So this is the eutrophication. So this is a syndrome of the ecosystem. How do we identify whether eutroph eutrophication has happened or not is through the growth of green algae on the surface of the water body. For example, this is an example of eutrophication where the growth of algae on the surface of the water body is seen. So this is a condition of eutrophication. So this eutrophication is due to the enrichment of aquatic system by the addition of nutrients as I discussed earlier. And the reason, reason for this enrichment addition of nutrients is due to the leaching of phosphates and nitrate containing fertilizers from agricultural land into the lakes and rivers and also addition of sewage, sewage water into the water bodies and, and release of uh, industrial effluents into the water bodies because this sewage and industrial effluents also contains uh, a lot of nutrients in the form of various sources okay and this also adds nutrients to the water body these are the reason okay and this this addition of nutrients into the water body will result in unsustainable growth of certain organisms that is plant based organisms these are called algae and blue green bacteria and these organisms uh, undergoes population explosion because of uh, nutrient enrichment of the water okay it it, it reaches an unst unsustainable proportion and this these algal blooms uh, covers entire surface of the water body okay top layer of the water body as i shown uh, in in a previous slide okay and this this population explosion and harmful algal bloom on the surface of the water body will restrict the penetration of sunlight into the deeper layers okay because of the uh, opaqueness due to the growth of these algal bodies so this restriction of penetration of sunlight will result in the reduction in the growth of phytoplanktons because phytoplanktons are the important source of oxygen in the soil because they fixes the photosynthesis and these are all the basic food source for zooplanktons and other subsequent chain of organisms in the aquatic ecosystem. So this restriction of penetration of sunlight will result in the reduction in oxygen concentration in the soil, sorry water and this algal blooms after the death reaches the bottom of the water body and there it, it undergoes uh, decomposition. So for decomposition the oxygen is required. Okay oxygen is required and various microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, saprophytes utilizes the oxygen present in the water to decompose this harmful algal blooms which, which are dead okay and this this consumes significant amount of oxygen and this uh, this result in the availability of less oxygen for the other organisms present in the water including fishes and other aquatic organisms so this result in the suffocation and death of aquatic and animals okay so this is the major effect of eutrophication on the aquatic ecosystem so because of the less amount of dissolved oxygen in the water this is con creating a condition of anaerobic environment where anaerobic means without oxygen okay anaerobic environment also triggers the growth of as different class of organism called bacteria called clostridium botulinum this clostridium botulinum produces toxins okay which are harmful lethal uh, to the various uh, aquatic organisms including fishes okay shell fishes and, the, and other fishes so if any mammal or bird consumes this 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 poisoned 
aquatic organisms then they are they are also has the possibility of uh, die okay uh, of death and this this whole chain reaction will result in the degradation of aquatic ecosystem so in nature there are two different types of uh, eutrophication one is natural eutrophication and another one is ma man made eutrophication under natural eutrophication it occurs uh, over a period of centuries okay this is a slow process uh, and this is temporary okay and uh, this is due to addition of nutrients through nature itself and this man made phenomenon is a recent phenomenon uh, with the interference in the ecosystem and this happens very quickly uh, over a decade that means 8 to 10 years eutrophication can happen uh, in a water body and man uh, contributes various source of sources of nutrients into the water body for example through agriculture operations sewage treatments or industrial effluents okay and what are the sources of nutrients uh, which which triggers eutrophication these include point sources which have direct uh, uh, directly contribute nutrients to the water body and the second is non point sources here the point sources include waste wastewater effluent that is sewage from the municipal and industrial bodies the second is runoff and leaching uh, from waste disposal system runoff and infiltration from animal feed lots okay runoff from mines oil fields unsewered industrial sites overflow of combined storm and sanitary sewage water okay these are all the important point sources that is direct sources for addition of nutrients into the water body and the second is non point sources this this include runoff from agriculture and irrigation this is the major source of addition of nutrients in, into the water body which causes eutrophication the second is runoff from pasture and range and urban runoff from unsewered areas septic tank leakages runoff from construction sites of more than 20000 square meter runoff from abandoned mines okay at atmospheric deposition over a water surface for example if nitrogen uh, is uh, deposited to the atmosphere through various uh, burning of fossil fuels that also contributes uh, nitrogen to the water body through rain or other means so these are the point and non point sources for eutrophication so this this diagram will explain clear clearly about the eutrophication here the sunlight is the major source of energy for aquatic ecosystem as well and with the addition of nitrogen phosphorus uh, phosphorus uh, nutrients into the soil through various sources that i mentioned in the previous slide through point and non point sources these increases the phytoplankton that is blue green algae and uh, blue green bacteria in the soil so this covers the whole soil surface okay this restricted uh, the flow of sunlight into the deeper layers Ah, uh, thereby it reduces the oxygen. Okay, after it, after the death of these algal blooms, they reaches the bottom of the water body. Okay, and for decaying these, decaying and converting them into organic carbon, uh, the various uh, saprophytes, that is bacteria, fungi, and other microorganisms, utilize oxygen present in the water to break down this organic matter. So this consumes a lot of oxygen. So this will result in the shortage of oxygen in the water body so this will create suffocation for the uh, micro uh, sorry uh, aquatic organisms including fishes and other organisms in the soil so this is a chain reaction and now let's discuss about the effects of uh, eutrophication okay uh, this effects include change in the ecosystem this eutrophication phenomenon will changes the entire ecosystem of the aquatic life and this result in the uh, formation of detritus layer that is the saprophytes which uh, decomposes the dead and decayed matter okay and this is an important uh, addition uh, after the eutrophication and this also converts the aquatic ecosystem into a marshy land because lot of uh, harmful algal blooms after their death reaches the bottom of the water body and this will create the marshy condition this increases the turbidity so this changes the entire ecosystem of the aquatic life okay and the second important thing is that it decreases the biodiversity because it because it reduces the oxygen and it reduces this sunlight penetration into the water body because of the growth of harmful algal blooms so uh, because of the less oxygen and less light penetration 
it reduces the biodiversity and plant uh, plant and animal life in the water body and the third is that it result in the new species invasion because uh, the aerobic condition is converted into anaerobic condition because of the uh, reduction in the oxygen concentration a new class of species will emerge in this ecosystem like clostridium uh, botulinum and other anaerobic organisms the fourth thing is that it increases the toxicity in the water body because of the growth of uh, uh, anaerobic bacteria like clostridium botulinum and other harmful algal blooms uh, these these organisms has neurotoxins okay they produce neurotoxins and hepatotoxins and these are lethal uh, to the aquatic organisms as well as the human beings and mammals so this increases increases the toxicity of the water as well as the living organisms thereby destabilizing the whole ecosystem itself and it also reduces the growth of coral reefs sorry coral reefs okay and the color of the water body is changed from uh, transparent to uh, various colors like uh, blue green or red or uh, other colors depending upon the uh, pigmentation of the blue green algae algae and bacteria and it increases the gelatinous zoos zooplankton this is also toxic uh, to most of the uh, organisms so these are all the effects of uh, eutrophication on the aquatic ecosystem and how how this eutrophication can be mitigated there are various uh, uh, ways we can uh, reduce the eutrophication uh, one of the important thing is that by creating buffer okay buffer uh, between the water body and the source of nutrients okay this buffer restrict the movement of nutrients into the water body for example by creating uh, a, a grasses by, by growing grasses or check burns a similar similar constructions so the second thing is reducing the soil erosion will also reduce the leaching of uh, nutrients into the nearby water bodies uh, this can be done uh, by the growth of grasses and uh, flowing across the slope okay and other means and the next thing is while applying fertilizers uh, to the agricultural land soil testing okay soil testing should be there should be done and fertilizer will be applied uh, based on the requirement of the soil uh, rather than application of uh, uh, fertilizers blindly okay and another important thing is adoption of organic farming which reduces the use of fertilizers and adoption of integrated nutrient management include integrating various sources of fertilizers in the agricultural operation including organic inorganic and other means okay and this also reduces the fertilizer runoff to the nearby water bodies thereby reducing the nutrients nutrient addition to the water body and the another thing is that sewage treatment okay sewage treatment before releasing into the water also reduces the eutrophication so this is it thank you thanks for watching please share watch my previous videos on environment and ecology series thanks